Good afternoon, good night, good morning, good Thursday, and happy Commencement Day 2021. I'm Steve Seidel, and as faculty director of the Arts and Education program here at the Harvard Graduate School of Education, it is my honor to welcome you to this celebration. Before we begin, I want to acknowledge indigenous peoples as the traditional stewards of the land and the enduring relationship that exists between them and their traditional territories. The land on which Harvard sits is the traditional unceded territory of the Wampanoag Nation. I want to acknowledge the tragic history of genocide and forced occupation of their territories. We honor and respect the many diverse indigenous people who have been connected to this land from time immemorial. Today, we celebrate the passion, commitment, and beautiful work that has brought each of our graduates to the completion of the requirements for a master's degree in art in education. We are spread out around the globe today as we have been all through this academic year, so we reach across space and time to be together at this moment. And yes, I believe that we are together. This may not be the graduation ceremony that we dreamt of, Indeed, it isn't, but I believe our spirit can transcend distance and our community can cross boundaries. It is also my honor to welcome the family, friends, loved ones, children, and partners of our graduates. Many of you are watching this ceremony across the U.S. or around the globe, often, sadly, not sharing physical space with the graduates you are celebrating. I hope that you will all be able to have your own more intimate gatherings in days to come with toasts, cheers, congratulations, and hopefully with hugs. If I may, I'd like to start by speaking to the families, friends, and all those who helped our graduates on their journey to this moment. Many of you were there for them long before they ever had the idea to pursue graduate study at Harvard. Nobody gets to graduate school on their own, and nobody gets through a demanding graduate program without support. You have nurtured and encouraged these graduates, believed in them when they had doubts, and critically, you have shared their belief in the value and importance of learning and education. You were there when they started this adventure last August, and you have supported them from that moment until now. I never forget that there is a community behind each student. I may never meet that community, but you were there before this academic year started, and you'll be there long after this year is over. Our work would mean little without your efforts, so I thank you. We've never met, but I feel we've been working together, your wonderful colleagues. And to the graduates, as you reflect on those who helped you get to this milestone, I want to leave you a moment to hold in mind those who are with us only in spirit today, who have loved you and inspired you and who you carried with you when you came to Harvard. Let's just take a quiet moment for you to feel the presence of these special people. Now, one more word to family and friends. If the graduate you are celebrating today can always make it clear to you what this year has been like for them, the challenges they faced, the difficult choices they've had to make, the worries, the joys, and perhaps most of all, the evolving and emerging meaning of this experience, I want to ask you to please be patient. It's been a whirlwind. A lot has happened in a relatively short time, and frankly, there's still a lot to figure out. Indeed, I hope this is the case. I don't want to think that a year of study at this School of Education is easy to contain and explain. I want it to take time, weeks, months, years even. That's my hope. The test is time. What emerges as the important lessons from this year, the lessons that prove most lasting, useful, and inspiring will reveal themselves. But we probably can't know now what they will turn out to be or even when they will reveal themselves. In this regard, this year of study may be a bit like a very slow time release capsule. 
This has been a year of remarkable uncertainty, and one of the biggest challenges in any time of uncertainty is whether, in the face of it all, we can hold focus on the hard work of learning. When things get tough, as they have, can we recognize the limits of what we know and push forward to try to understand more, to make greater sense of what we are experiencing? And here is one of the many lessons I've learned from my side of the Zoom room during this year of online learning. I learned that every one of you graduating today, despite quarantine, despite isolation, despite countless complex emotions, every one of you has stayed engaged, found meaning and inspiration, and kept learning. And with exceptional grace and beauty, you were there for each other through it all despite the distances and challenges of this year. If a central purpose of education is, as I believe it is, to prepare students to continue learning through whatever they encounter in life, you have all proven yourselves more than ready to graduate. You have embraced the work of learning through the tremendous challenges of this year with deep curiosity, thoughtfulness, emotional honesty, tenderness, caring, generosity, resilience, and open hearts. You have met the challenges of this year, and along the way, I have watched you inspire each other as you have inspired me. So it is truly an honor for me now to call your names for graduation. Distinguished graduates, you have fulfilled the requirements of a master's in education specific to the requirements of the arts and education program at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. To one and all, my most sincere and hearty congratulations and a resounding bravo in celebration of the intense bravery you have each in your own beautiful way demonstrated this year. And so now, the graduating class of the Arts in Education program. The Intellectual Contribution Award recipient for the Arts and Education program, Yesenia Perez. Anne Ahn. Rebecca Deutsch. Sarah Ezaldin Hassan El Mosri, Abigail Feldman, Remy Fernandez O'Brien, Bobo Gua, Yue Han. Sarah Hazelwood, Tati Hernandez, Alex Kalamaroff, Libby Keller, Jane NG. Kim, Lucia Lee Laughlin, Tiffany Millard, Jamian Moss, Ruby Muller. Matt Murphy, Garrett Obricky, Annabelle Parker, Juan Rivera, Jake Stepanski.
Elizabeth Stern. Juliana Tanjo. Amanda Torres. Mandy Whited. Ashley L. Whitfield. Yee N. Yi. Yue Yin. And the Marshal for the Arts and Education Program, Sharon Estefani Figueroa Argueta. So, once again, congratulations to the graduates of the class of AIE of 2021. And now I'd like to close this ceremony with a few thoughts and, of course, an assignment. You know perfectly well, and probably even more deeply than I do, that you are graduating at an extraordinary moment in human history. Indeed, we face so many challenges right now. Certainly, our first challenge is to protect human life, to do everything possible to stop the loss of life from this pandemic, but also from the devastating power of racism and white supremacy, as well as unchecked environmental degradation and other failures of our social and political systems. Then we face the challenge of emerging from this period and creating a world in which these threats will diminish and disappear. This will require that we learn critical lessons from this terrible time. But that learning process can be very hard. So if it would be OK, I'd like to give you one last assignment, which aligns with my interest in exercises we can do throughout our professional lives, whenever we need to do them, to stay in shape for the hard work we encounter. This exercise is something you can practice every day for the rest of your lives, but it might make sense to start smaller and try to just do it for, oh, I don't know, how about three days in a row? If you find it useful, you can keep going. This is an exercise for our imaginations and the extreme test they are being put to at this moment. It rests on the question, what is the role of imagination in this impossible time? I want to emphasize the sense of urgency I feel about this with a thought from Moises Kaufman, the Venezuelan-born theater director and playwright, whose work addresses the role of the artist in society the educational responsibilities of artists, and the role of imagination in making a new world. Kaufman said, imagination is the only thing that will save us from ourselves. Imagination is the only thing that will save us from ourselves. That thought was in my mind when this exercise started to take form. It, but I was also thinking of a line from Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. And here's the passage. You may well know it. Alice laughed. There's no use trying, she said. One can't believe impossible things. I dare say you haven't had much practice, said the queen. When I was your age, I always did it for half an hour a day. Why, sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. OK, so this exercise, let's call it six impossible things before breakfast, frames believing as imagining and asks you to identify things that may seem impossible but are still worth doing everything we can possibly do to bring them to life. This is imagination in the moral terms that I think philosopher Maxine Green had in mind when she spoke about imagining the world as if it could be otherwise. In the coming weeks and months, you'll have many decisions to make. There's little that is easy or obvious about your next steps. In addition to finding your way through countless practical decisions, you will also be working hard to identify how to apply all you've been studying and working on this year as you work to make a life that feels ethical, right, 
and good in a world gone wrong in so many ways. And because you are educators, you also have the responsibility to help us all truly, deeply learn from the experience of our collective past and this current moment. And in so doing, you will help to shape a new world out of these earthquakes, these fundamental shifts that are throwing into question the foundations on which our societies are built. Institutions as fundamental as our governments, legal systems, health care systems, environmental protection systems, and yes, absolutely, our approaches to education. And yes, the very meaning of culture and the practice of the arts. To help prepare for these responsibilities, this exercise asks you to identify little ways we live our lives, organize our communities, and practice our vocations, imagining them as if they could be otherwise. And then to think very specifically about what you could do to take steps in that direction. Think of this as a form of micro-research in which you identify and study small but still quite important dimensions of our lives, which, if transformed, would, bit by bit, change the quality of our lives. Now, the challenge of this exercise, of course, is to focus your imagination on impossible changes that align with your deepest values, what feels most essential and matters to you most. And that, we know, calls for serious and consistent reflection, examination, contemplation, and yes, action. The daily work of artists, educators, and all those dedicated to healing, transformation, and creative remaking of our world. OK, that's the exercise. I'll send you a written version of this exercise soon. I invite you to start work on it as soon as you've had a chance to take a few deep breaths. Let me know how it goes. OK, enough assignments. It's time to let you go. No, wait. I'm sorry. One more thing. It's an invitation and a request. Please stay in touch. I say this because selfishly, I want to hear from you. I will miss you, and I care what happens next for you. So please, stay in touch with me, but also with this community. First and foremost, with each other and the other students you've studied here with at HGSE, but also with faculty, your advisors, Aisha, Shari, Kate, and the many other faculty and staff here, especially Susan Kandel, with whom you've spent so much time this year. We want to know what you are doing and how you are doing. And we want to know if we can be helpful to you. So yes, please, stay in touch. And beyond that, I say please stay in touch as a reminder of things that are so critically important in life. To stay in touch with your feelings, to stay in touch with your ancestors, to stay in touch with what's happening in the world, to stay in touch with your inner life, to stay in touch with nature, to stay in touch with your creative energy, and to do all of this because in addition to feeling good, staying in touch acknowledges the profound truth of our interconnectedness, a truth made abundantly clear in our experiences together this year and in this current global crisis. So please, 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 stay in touch. Okay, this is hard, but once more, with great respect, admiration, gratitude, and love, congratulations, and bravo. <laughs> <laughs>